Welcome back to Comparison Cooking. My name's Kevin, and today we're gonna to be talking about sandblasting, restoring an awesome, huge, towable smoker and everything that went into it. Stay tuned. One of the things I wanna to talk to you about in this video is what costs actually went into buying the equipment I needed to use to restore the smoker. You guys know I love an offset smoker more than any other type of cooker. Now, I love cooking on this, doing everything I possibly can, except getting the rust off of it. So let me back up. This is my friend's smoker. I said, hey, I'm, I'm gonna buy a towable smoker. And he was like, why are you gonna do that? I haven't used mine in six months. Why don't you just take mine? So I was like, all right, let's just do that. Let's see how that works out. I'm very grateful for that. But one of the things I wanted to do, I've seen all these videos of people sandblasting, using a grinder on their smoker and getting it to where they want it to be. So I figured if my friend's gonna let me borrow it, let me go and do the grunt work. Now, I've done a lot of grunt work throughout my life. I mowed lawns for years and years, which I love doing actually. Uh, I've totally removed an entire house of rubble, taken it to the dump. I've done and gotten my hands dirty in the past. I will say this process was probably the worst process I've done. I least, I liked it the least out of any of the grunt work I've done in the past. Now that's probably due to the sandblaster not having the proper equipment. So that's the premise of this video is I wanna walk you through what you're actually going to deal with when you use a grinder, uh, use a sandblaster as a, amateur sandblaster, amateur grinder. I don't do those type of things on a regular basis. I don't have that equipment readily available, but I figured spend a couple hundred bucks on sanding this down, grinding it down, sandblasting it down versus buying $4,000 for a brand new workhorse style smoker. That's the route I wanted to go. And let me tell you, once again, I still regret doing it. It was almost to the point of, let me try to hunt down a newerish smoker instead of spending a couple hundred bucks on getting it where it needs to be. In hindsight, obviously, you wanna use restore, use less money on getting your smoker exactly where you want. So let's jump in to what happened. First off, I used a grinder. I. I Never used a grinder in my life. It looked easy enough and it was pretty easy. However, there were a lot of nooks and cranny spaces in this smoker that had a lot of rust buildup that I wanted to get in there, smooth out before applying oil or paint. When dealing with the grinder, it did a nice job, but like I was saying, getting in those nooks and crannies, it just wasn't happening. So I decided, you know what? I need to buy a sandblaster and give that a go. So after a bunch of videos watching sandblasting be done, I decided to settle on this one that had a canister here that you fill up with the grit and you just blast away. I thought, great, that'll get in the nooks and crannies. Wrong, well, it did but the ease of it was wrong. This thing was blasting back. And anyone that's a professional sandblaster, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I went out and I got a, you know, creepy hood that looks like it could be its own horror movie. But I got this and I put this on. So now we're talking middle of the summer, the heat is pumping and I'm wearing this. It is fogging up within 30 seconds. I got a six gallon compressor. I didn't have a six gallon compressor, so I had to buy that also, along with this. After about 45 seconds, if that long, probably closer to 20, I had to wait for the compressor to build back up to get the right amount of firepower blowing that sand on it. In that 20 seconds, this fogged up. So it was completely annoying. You had long sleeves on, pants on, it's 90 degrees out, you're sweating, but you're getting bombarded with sand. This helped, but ultimately I took out the mask here, or the glass. I wore glasses and I wore a mask. So another reason I didn't like using a sandblaster was there's the hazardous aspect of it. It's not something I do on a regular basis. 
I wish, I wish it was a little easier, but having this gun, you're only extending your arm this far. And when you're hitting that, it's bouncing back and it's hitting back at you. So that's why you have to be fully covered up. You have to be masked up. It's probably better to do this in the fall or winter to keep yourself cool and not hyperventilating in these masks. Finally, I used a rust off. This was a gel that had very confusing directions on the bottle. It said to get water on the rust spots, okay? Then spray it down with gel. I did that and it really didn't work. It was very frustrating. I was, I was kind of pissed about it and it made no sense. There was no like, you know, keep it wet. Well, why am I keeping this thing wet? It's gel, it should be wet by itself. It didn't work. It didn't eat away at the rust like it advertised. I don't know if this was just too heavy, too thick of a rust and it was used to dealing with, you know, rust on a screw that's been sitting out in the sun. I don't know, but I didn't like it. Before I get to my final conclusion, I wanna let you know that I just oiled this down. I'm gonna do a follow-up video of using linseed oil. I'm not going into great detail, just very quickly what my experience was like, especially since everyone's buying it. But also, that video is gonna follow up what is the rust doing, what is the application a few weeks later, a few days later, looking like on the different sides I used. Rust off, the sandblaster, and the grinder. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that video on the Meadow Creek. In my conclusion, when restoring and really taking off the rust out of a beautiful smoker you find, but it's been a little neglected, the best thing I think you can do is probably do the sandblasting method. As much as I hate it, every second of it, it really was the way to go. Now here's what I would have done different. I thought having my own sandblaster like this would be very convenient. It is not, it was not, it just sucked. I would research a little more into a longer sandblaster. I wouldn't want you to spend more money on a sandblaster, a more expensive one, but I have seen a few that looks like it has a four to five foot pole. Uh, you know, that's probably a professional sandblaster, people that know what they're doing. But that's really what I would look for is trying to find a friend that might have this equipment or a rental place that will let you rent a sandblaster. I spent 30 bucks on this, 10 bucks on the sand, 25 bucks on this, which I will never ever use again, probably. I don't know, I'll keep it around, but more than likely it's just gonna sit. 130 bucks on the air compressor. What else? The rust off, that was 10 bucks. Luckily, my friend that had the smoker had the grinder, so I didn't spend any money on that. But all in, other things I've spent money on for this project, just getting the rust off, was probably around $200. Now, $200 versus going out and getting, you know, a $3,000 smoker, yeah, all day long, you wanna spend the 200 bucks. But if now, knowing now what I know, I would have gone with trying to hunt down a local welder, uh, somebody that might have sandblasting equipment there and seeing if they do this and if they do it at a very inexpensive cost. Even if it was three or four, 500 bucks, I would probably have them do it versus me trying to go out and buy the equipment that's probably never ever gonna be used again. So now I might have to resell it. We'll see, we'll see. But I would try to find a friend that has this gear before you take on this project or a welder that will either let you rent their gear, which they probably won't, but you could pay them to restore it. Now, this thing is looking great. I would be on the hunt, especially in Facebook Marketplace, trying to find the towable smoker or a very high-end smoker that you want. It is a project that can be done, but you might wanna look in September so that by the time you get your smoker, you're starting to get into colder weather. Because if I had to do this all over again, I would do it in colder weather. I hope this video helped understand what it's actually gonna take for someone that doesn't do this on a regular basis. Get in there, get the grinders going, get the sandblasters going. Like I said, I preferred the sandblaster for removing the rust, but the process of the sandblaster for me completely sucked. But it's the way to go. 
hopefully if you guys have any comments insight that could help the barbecue community on what to look for you know is there a better way to do this please let us know as always i hope you're having a great day and i'll see you real soon